Hello viewers, welcome to Glitch Turismo Sport. Now it's been a while since we've done the manufacturer series, mainly because crap like this kept happening, where we simply just could not leave the pit lane. Had a little disco going on in here, as you can see, everyone smashing around. Not very safe at all, I think the health and safety inspectors will have something to say about this. And our aim here is to make McLaren great again, of course. We had a good run. Uh, round 1, 2 and 3, decent scores, getting better. 4, 5 and 6, yeah, 0 points for all of those rounds. Okay, so here is the first race, Brands Hatch. Unfortunately, another glitch. I get put into my own lobby, so I can race against myself. Yes, good times indeed. But I could use this session here just as a practice, I suppose. So I practiced the qualifying session anyway. Come up with a 24.1. Now, pole position, baby. Yeah, look at that. Pole position. Also last, as it happens. Okay, so we use that little practice there. And eventually, we get back into another lobby. We can try again. And hopefully, is it going to load? Is it going to load? It's that heart in mouth moment. Yes, okay. We're in. Finally, we are in a lobby. We can actually do a race now. Okay, so this is the first lap, our first qualifying lap. Crossing the line with a 24.6. It wasn't the greatest lap. We were kind of hampered there by the Renault right at the end as well, uh, towards the end of that lap. So at this point here, just a second off of pole position, sitting in 16th. And this is my final flying lap of the qualifying session, so this needs to be a good lap. Uh, starting 16th is not going to be ideal in any way at all so let's see what we can do here in the mclaren group three car brands hatch grand prix circuit down the hill we are one and a half temps up a little bit wide at the bottom of the hill coming towards turn four looking for that second board on the right hand side there it is going quite deep and then coming back for that late apex getting good drive onto the back straight down the hill up towards hawthorns breaking just on the second board and we hook it in for a late apex on the power as early as we could. Probably miss the apex there by a metre or so. Clipping the apex nicely. You can really use a lot of kerb through that turn on the apex and on the exit. Up the hill, machine curve, difficult corner, blind. We get it just about right. And then into the left hander. 103.1. We are more than half a second up on our PB. So this could be a 123 we can just hook up this final turn over the crest and then back down again onto the main straight now we're going to stay to the right hand side here to have the straightest run to the line and there we go it's so a 23.8 or just below a nine going up to second position with a couple of people left running and fortunately they didn't improve on their time so we actually stay in second so that sets us up nicely for the race and hopefully we can actually stay in the race without it disconnecting uh, so a decent amount of points on offer and and it's been a while but here is a FIA intro okay I think these intros are just making <laughs> just making less and less sense but um, a man riding a pig I mean why not why not Okay, here we go then, starting second, up behind the Lexus on pole position. Now, it's a high tyre wear race, 12 times tyre wear as we begin the race. So 12 times, 15 laps around Brands Hatch. So this is going to be either, you can either go for a two-stop as he goes defensive up the hill into Druids. Now, you can either go defence, sorry, you can either go for the two-stop strategy, pitting maybe lap 5 and 10. Or, which I'm hopefully intending to do here, go for the one-stop pit at the end of lap 7 or 8. And uh, the, the main issue with that really is that you are basically dancing on ice when uh, you're on that final lap of the stint. The tyres really do go off very quickly. So we're on the medium tyre. I do think that when there's a choice of, of um, compounds, as there is here, so you can choose medium and hard, typically it's better just to go with a softer tyre and just deal with the tyre wear. So I typically think that's the better approach. So I've gone for the medium rather than the hard. So I won't be 
uh, outpaced at the beginning of the race, which can be quite frustrating. Let's say, I've, let's say I went on the hard tyre right now. I'll just be going backwards and getting beaten up and bruised by everyone who's coming through on the medium tyres. But at the point here, we are still in the slipstream of the leader, and you can see there as we pan out a close race, the BMW just behind, the Corvette behind him, and then the Mercedes as well. As we come across the line to end the first lap, a solid first lap, uh, couldn't quite go for the lead, but um, always pleasing, you know, just one that I'm actually in the race and not disconnected or dancing around in the pit lane. But also just the fact that, you know, you have, you have a solid start, you haven't crashed, haven't got a penalty. And uh, the first lap is the worst lap to get a penalty, I think, because let's say you've got a five second penalty, you're going to lose more than five seconds and then for loads of positions because everyone's more bunched up on that first lap. So it's worse. It's the worst time to get a penalty, I think. Although it's never a good time, uh, it must be said, to get a penalty. So the Lexus there just dropping out of slipstream range or on the cusp of slipstream range, having a good turn. I think the Lexus is a really very solid all-round car and out of all the manufacturers, I think Lexus have been consistently one of the better ones. Not the best, but consistently decent. Some cars get shafted by BOP and then come back very good and then get shafted again. Um, McLaren, I think, actually not too bad, you know. So, you know, when, when I uh, joined McLaren at the beginning of the season, um, there, were, there were calls to say that this was an awful decision. And in many ways it is, or in some ways it is, but you know what, I don't think it's as bad as um, I expected. The likes of TRL Lightning, you know, TRL Lightning has chosen McLaren and he is at, uh, at the beginning of this round at least in the lead of the manufacturer championship so he's beating Toyota BMWs Porsches so if he can do it then I should be able to do it well you know technically I mean it can be done that's what I mean to say I'm not going to say that I could do what Lightning does because I can't if I could then I would be doing it wouldn't I and I'll be in the lead by miles but that obviously is not the case Okay, so through the long left, onto the back straight, and um, it just looks as though we're struggling for pace compared to that Lexus, and this is a situation by lap 7, and we are almost four and a half seconds away from the leader, you can see he's just going around that turn there, and in turn we are nearly three seconds ahead of the Polish driver behind in the BMW. Now the thing you want to look here, look at here is the, uh, the tyre. Uh, information on the bottom left of the screen and that <laughs> the rear left is pretty much fully depleted so it's pretty much dying it's it's death it's dying it's death right now into the final turn so we are going to come into the pit lane swing over to the right hand side there we go totally abusing all the lines in we go here are the mclaren boys give me some new rubber people thank you very much so away we go Beautiful car, the McLaren 650S. Absolutely love the look of this thing. Really, really nice looking car. I think arguably the best looking Group 3 car. Um, and when I say arguably, I'm saying no, it, it just is the best looking Group 3 car. If you think otherwise, then please do comment because I'd like to I'd like to know your opinion on that. But uh, yeah, I, I really like the look of the McLaren. So okay, this is an interesting phase of the race because as, as mentioned earlier, we have mixed strategy on offer here so I've gone obviously for the one stop pitting at the end of lap seven these guys would have gone in at the end of lap five uh, for their first of two stops which meant that they kind of got the undercut for a couple of laps whilst I was on the really slow tires they were on fresh rubber and lapping quicker that's how they've got ahead uh, but they will have to pit again so this point of the race now I'm on the fresh tire and they're on the older tyres, so their tyres um, will be just a couple of laps older, not many laps older, but a couple. So they should be a tiny bit slower as uh, we try to fight our way back through. So you just want to really get through as quickly as possible. I don't want to be slowed down too much because it could cost me later in the race. So looking up the inside, I don't think that's quite going to uh, quite going to happen there. Just I was just trying to scare him into a move, and he actually goes into the pit lane. And as a result, I've been compromised. The Nissan GTR up the inside, he's going to take the position. As we head into turn one, he gets in ahead, slots in ahead, but just drives slightly wide of the apex. The space opens up on the exit. I'm on the right hand side, coming into the right hander. 
and we retake third. So it probably was not the best decision to go up the inside into that final turn. Uh, I didn't really think that that guy behind was so close. Probably was not paying attention enough to the people behind. And you can see there, as a result of that lap, it wasn't the best lap because I kind of got held up there a little bit too much against the Mercedes. Perhaps could have gone for the move a little bit earlier. And the Nissan and the BMW there catching up slightly, although through that turn they were fighting. And I've now just got out of the slipstream range. This car is actually not too bad in a straight line either, so as long as I can get out of that slipstream range, then I'm not pulling them along in a nice, tidy fashion. So the gap actually now above a second. So at the beginning of the lap, I was down in fourth and uh, looking under pressure, but all of a sudden, things can change very quickly. And now I'm in a comfortable third with a one and a half second gap. So it just shows you really how quickly things can change as we come towards the final turn. And now we can turn our attention to the Mercedes ahead. So he was sitting in fifth uh, in the early parts of the race. And now he's going to be on his final lap of that stint. So presuming he's going to pit at the end of lap 10. And um, that will be his second stop of two. Coming to the first turn, hitting the apex eventually. And then using plenty of the runoff, the AstroTurf runoff on the exit of Paddock Hill Bend. As we come around the hairpin and then back down the hill on the other side. So the gap to the guy ahead, 1.7 as we come through here. And he's actually just dipped two wheels onto the grass, sliding across the circuit. And he's recovered the slide, but he has lost plenty of time. Gap down to 0.5, so well within slipstream range now. I think he's struggling on those tyres. So it is a high attrition race, as I said at the, at the beginning. 12 times tyre wear, which is very high. Fuel is only three times, and it's such that you don't have to fuel save at all. You can just rev the crap out of the engine and not have to worry about the fuel at all. So it's all about the tyres, basically, this race. It's all about the tyres. The strategy, keeping the tyres in check, make sure you don't overheat them too much and make sure you don't overwork them or just going for the two-stop and being more aggressive. So this is quite a crucial moment here as he actually goes wide through Sheen Curve on the exit and through and he's definitely struggling with those tyres or pressure, one of the two. Super GT pressure has wiped him to the side. Cheers, Moses, once again, mate. Good stuff. Into the final corner. So he's going to have to go in here for his final stop. There he goes, you can see just in the background, he goes into the pit lane. So he's got the benefit of fresh tyres from here to the end, but I will just pull away slightly here. Let's see where he comes out at the end. Now the thing about the pit lane here, you might have noticed it when I went in, you actually lose really hardly anything, because as soon as you go in over the line of the pit lane, you're basically in your pit box, and then, of course, once you leave the pit box, you're right at the exit. So you don't lose too much time here. And the Mercedes who we're just following there, up into 7th at this point here. So I'm just trying to scan on the map. Where is 7th? 7th is coming into the previous turn. So maybe about 10 seconds behind. So it could get interesting with those guys. But the, the problem with the two-stop, I think, is the traffic. That is the main problem with it. So you come out, you go in early, you come out, and you're stuck behind other people who are going on the one-stop. So that's the main thing I think you have to think about. If you're, if you're ever doing a two-stop when lots of people are doing a one just think about the traffic, because you don't want to come out and get stuck behind slower people for too long. And unfortunately that kind of happened to me. But um, at this point here, looking comfortable in second, the Polish driver just behind in, uh, in third, two seconds behind, and the leader just stretching clear. Uh, I was only really able to keep with him for the first two laps or so, and uh, the gap up to nine seconds now to the leader. He's, just, he's driving really well. I think that Lexus really working for him around the Brands Hatch circuit. Crossing the line then at the end of lap number 11. Just four laps left to go. 12, 13, 14 and 15. That back left is already beginning to die death as we come up the hill. So I do have to be careful uh, coming, out the, coming out the turns. That's where you notice, I think, the, the rear. When the rear tyres go, you really notice that you can't get the traction as early as you'd like. The car just really wants to slide. So you just have to be really careful. Perhaps even just try straighten up the car a lot more as you accelerate and that should alleviate slightly that issue now the gap here 2.6 and then immediately just drops down so the Polish driver making a big mistake somewhere I think on that previous turn that I just went through so the gap up to five seconds now uh, to lost Shelty in third so I've just gained three seconds over the person behind 
Now this is the end of the race pretty much, so crossing the line to begin the final lap, 15, the 15th lap of 15. And we're kind of in our own little zone here, so seven and a half seconds ahead, seven and a half seconds behind. So it's pretty much just a case of bringing the car home. I'm not going to gain a position unless the guy just really makes some sort of silly error, but then he shouldn't because he's got so much time to play with. He can really afford just to back off and play it safe from here to the end, as I should probably do the same as well, just to make sure I don't lose a second. And uh, yeah, this, this final lap is really pretty much a case of just dancing on ice once again. Uh, the eighth lap on this stint on medium tyres on 12 times tyre wear, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really lend itself to much grip. So you were uh, you are sliding around the circuit quite a lot. And actually, the, the Mercedes driver came through to third there. So the driver we were fighting with on lap nine and ten. So he came through to third. So the two stop wasn't completely a bad strategy. Um, I suppose having the one stop means you you're more likely to make a mistake because you're on you're on the old tyres and it's very hard to control at times. So well done to the, the Lexus driver there, really easily winning that race. Got eight seconds to him in the end. And um, But you know what, second place, I'm happy with that. And it kind of uh, brings our championship cause back on track after having three zero point finishes. So let's take a quick look at the rankings. This is the main thing we're going for this season trying to finish in the top three and currently I am third so I'm happy with that we're not going to beat lightning we could possibly get second but it's going to be very very difficult so the main aim here really is just to have a solid finish and maybe buffer up that 6,100 points a little bit more but that's the end of the video guys thank you so much for tuning in I really hope you enjoyed it let me know your thoughts I shall see you in the next one thanks for watching goodbye